In this masterpiece of a play by William Shakespeare, we chose to do a musical score for Act 5, Scene 8, because this scene depicts the demise of the main character Macbeth, as foreshadowed by the witches in Act 4, Scene 1. Important textual devices in the scene include the theme of ambition and greed, the motifs of darkness and insanity, and the characterizations of Macduff and Macbeth. We chose a musical piece to illustrate these devices because music is how many people choose to express themselves, and we thought it would be an interesting concept to convey the literary aspects of the scene without uttering a single word. I played the drums, Iden played the clarinet, and Peter played the trumpet. We will each address how different musical aspects can represent these different literary devices.
I use triplets for the scenes revolving around Macbeth, because triplets are not very common in music. And when I emphasized certain notes, it was meant to emphasize the unbalanced nature of Macbeth, and how he's no longer living the natural life he should be, after killing Duncan, who was a servant of God. I used eighth notes and rolls in 4-4 time for the character of Macduff, because it is the standard meter in music. This is meant to characterize Macduff as being standard, and therefore, this is meant to make Macduff appear as an honest and noble being, as we would expect a thane to be. It also helps us sympathize with him because he is still able to persevere with his head held high after losing his family to the tyrant Macbeth. The use of the drum roll when Macduff is in a scene is relevant because drum rolls are often used for announcements by royalty, such as announcing the death of a king which is why it was used in this scene to announce the death of Macbeth. The change in meter is meant to show the contrast in ambitions and greed between Macduff and Macbeth. The shorter triplets are a symbol for how Macbeth talks in short and fast phrases due to his guilt from the despicable murders he has committed against Dunco and Banquo and more. These acts resulted from his overambition which also reveals Macbeth to be a dynamic character, as it is evident how at the beginning of the play Macbeth is against committing anything foul for his ambitions of fair titles. The standard meter is meant to show how Macduff is completely sane, and how his greed and ambitions have not overpowered his being. Macduff has not committed any heinous actions or has been corrupted by the na supernatural forces that are the witches. He acts completely orthodox and respectable which makes him the more honorable character and ruler than Macbeth, who is going insane and is finding it hard to live with his immense guilt. By using a shorter meter for Macbeth, we were also attempting to create a tone of emergency for the viewers. This urgency shows how Macbeth has become paranoid, which was the reason he unnecessarily murdered Banquo and the residents of the Macduff castle. The standard meter of Macduff creates a calmer tone, and as we make the calm tone more dominant at the end, it creates a victorious mood because the standard calm sound has triumphed over the uncommon and frantic sound of Macbeth. When we were writing the music, we decided that because Macbeth had turned into an evil character, since Shakespeare used the motif of darkness to represent this evil, we use low, dark notes during Macbeth's music. This helps the viewer know that Macbeth is evil, even without knowing the background of the play. Throughout Macbeth's music, there is also a lot of octave changes to represent his drastic change throughout the play. At the beginning, Macbeth was an honest soldier in the king's army, and was, well, and was rewarded well for it. However, by the end of the play, Macbeth was an evil tyrant, and so the change in octaves represents the change in his character. However, Macduff is Macbeth's complete opposite. When Macbeth's piece is playing, it is a trumpet fanfare, representing his nobility and the goodness of his character. Also, we use mostly high notes in a normal key, so that Macduff's music would sound more royal and proper, as opposed to Macbeth's. Throughout this play, Shakespeare incorporated the motif of darkness and death. Throughout the play, when people mentioned darkness, there would be death, or they would be referring to a character dying. Because we knew that at the end of the scene, uh, Macbeth would be dying, we used low dark notes to symbolize the dark and darkness and death motif. In this piece, we also used lower and darker pitches during the battle scene, so we could demonstrate a clash of powers. Throughout this piece, we wrote in, in loud trumpet sounds, which represented Macduff, and we used loud clarinet sounds to represent Macbeth. This clash of in instruments signifies the battle, and that there should be tension. The mood that Shakespeare creates in this scene is tension, and so we tried to represent that in our music with a clash of instruments. Also, Shakespeare makes this scene feel dark, so use lower notes and darker pitches to represent this. Hello, my name is Peter, and in this part of the analysis, I'll be talking about how transitions show characterization, themes or motifs, and tone or mood. So first of all, transitions in the music we composed help develop and show the characters of Macbeth and Macduff. By this scene in the play, Macbeth has turned evil and almost completely insane. He blows off the warning of the witches and assumes that he is invincible. 
The transitions while Macbeth is walking and speaking are very harsh and quick, showing how he is pretty much insane. Not only are the notes and speed of the music very quick and dark, the transitions are very abrupt and unexpected. In the transitions, there is a drastic dynamic change, which also shows how Macbeth is a dynamic character. He went from being loyal to the king to willing to be willing to kill anyone who stood in his way. Transitions also show how Macduff is an honorable man and willing to fight for what is right. The transitions while Macduff are speaking and walking, they're very smooth and eloquent, while for Macbeth they're very rough and harsh. So next I'll be talking about theme and or motifs. So first of all, the transitions help develop the motifs of letting the eye not see what the hand does and the motifs of darkness. So the transitions for Macbeth are very rushed and very harsh and abrupt, which makes the reader, uh, the listener, think that the music was done very unprofessionally and done without much thought about it, as if somebody had not reread the music, as if somebody had not seen what the hand was doing while the music was being written. Next, the transitions are also very dark and harsh, which emphasize the motif of darkness and how Macbeth, his inner evil is coming out and he's willing to do anything to remain king. Not only does it develop Macbeth's character, the transitions also foreshadow how his death is imminent, whereas the transitions are constantly speeding up and becoming harsher and more rushed. Next we have tone or mood. The transitions in the music we composed show how Macbeth has lost his mind. The transitions are very, like I said, rushed and jumping from one thing to another very abruptly. They're, the transitions in our music are very different from the ordinary transitions you would find in music. Instead of slowly or gradually changing from one piece of the music to the next, it is very abrupt and very unexpected, which helped develop the mood or the tone that Shakespeare has while writing this. It's very unexpected, very dark, and very almost twisted, both how the music is written and how Macbeth is acting. Shakespeare effectively incorporated a theme, tone, and characterization throughout his play, so we tried to honor this by incorporating it into our piece. We hope you enjoyed our piece, as well as understanding why we made the decisions and added the musical aspects that we did. Thanks for listening.